Hey, good morning, everyone. This is class 12 for CAD 212, uh, class 11 for 212. Mornings are not my thing, y'all. Um, anyway, today in class, we are going to start our renovation phase. Um, we're going to be discussing different phases in architectural design. And in this particular phase, we're going to be discussing our schematic design phase. We'll discuss that in class a little bit. Um, after that, and how the progress, the project is going to um, move forward, we're going to begin our renovation. When we do our renovation, there's a couple of things that we're going to be doing. Um, you have your original model that's going to be starting, and we'll still kind of go back to that model um, every now and then to kind of refer to it, maybe update it a little bit, tweak it and things, find those errors that you, you um, may have made in the in that project. Uh, but we're going to be taking that file and then we're going to be resaving it as a new file and we're going to be working in the renovation model from now on. So you're going to be starting with the original file and then resave that as a renovation file. So you're going to have two model files that you're going to have to turn in at the end of the semester. But what we're going to talk about today is elevations, uh, level tools, how to raise the roof, how to increase our building from one story to two or uh, three floors. Uh, it can go up from there, but we're going to stop at three floors right now. Uh, and then we're going to discuss the kind of wood flooring that everybody's going to be using on that. Uh, then we'll talk about your second and third floor ideas. All that's going to be kind of reviewed in our schematic design phase when we discuss that. That's pretty much a good overview of today's uh, class. Um, let's go ahead and jump to Canvas. So in our mods, you'll see we have the next mod live, which is called Final Project Schematic Design Phase. And in the schematic design phase, uh, there's several different phases that we talk about in a firm when you're working on different um, project ideas. So the first phase is the schematic design phase. And the purpose of the schematic design phase is to develop a plan of action regarding how a building will look based on the client's budget and specific design requests. The architect prepares a rough set of plans or schematics that show a general model of where rooms will be located, the placement of doors and windows, and how the buildings will be structured overall. Some architects consider schematic design the most important time spent interacting with clients. At this stage, they have frequent meetings in order to keep clients abreast of the work and the direction. During these meetings, architects present drawings that describe the design ideas with respect to the budget. So that's, I'd like to read that one because it's very specific and it describes things very closely. It's really the jumping off point where you're really starting on a project. So think about this project as you're all your own design firms and you're all bidding for the same project to renovate this building. Now, all of you have slightly different versions of the building to start, but for the main, um, idea you all have the same floor plan. So the client is coming to you with this additional um, information. They want you to take this original building, this old building, and they want you to renovate it. And they're going to keep adding different aspects for you to change. So the initial request is to take that one story building and you want to add two floors to this commercial building. So this client does know that on the second floor, it should contain four office spaces, restrooms for women and men, and a janitor's closet and a mechanical room. On the third floor, they want seven offices, restrooms for men and women, and a mechanical room. So that's the minimum request of what the client wants. They have no idea, as a typical client, what they want it to look like. They, um, you know, it's up to you to take it from there. And as we progress through this, 
uh, project. The client's going to come back on Wednesday and have some other ideas for you and stuff like that. And what I like about this project is it really does give you a chance to flex your design skills, use the basics that we have already um, learned, and really add to it. And things like that and this is really where you get a chance to to learn how to um, manipulate revit and really kind of play with it to make it work the way you want to and kind of design some really cool stuff and that'll mean like you know changing the brick material on those walls i mean a lot of y'all still use the red brick um i'm going to give you some examples in the next class of like some of the changes that other people made uh changing the roof type also there's you, you pretty much have carte blanche to run on this the one good thing is the client has given you no budget restrictions on here. They just want to get some specifics on how these rooms are going to be used. Um, that being said, let's kind of jump into this a little bit. Um, I'm just going to open somebody's project that I've had. Okay, I got a chance to review some of them, so I'm just going to pick one at random. Um, let's just pick this one. Oops. So this is someone's initial work on this model. If we take a look at level one, we've got a nice basic outline of what this looks like. Mm -hmm. Now, what's weird about this set of plans that this client supplied you with is that some information is missing. Um, you know, if you really kind of paid attention to this, you'll notice that there's no way into this building, which is weird. So um, we need to think about where we want to add a front door. Um, an easy place to add an entryway is right here. The client didn't give you any information about changing the floor plan of the first floor or anything like that. So maybe that's when we come back on Tuesday, um, you'll want to create a list of questions and maybe that's something that you'll want to ask the client, uh, which will, you know, be me. Uh, so, um, as you're working through this, I want you to be thinking about what other information do you need to develop this project that you would win the bid. And it's not just a bid based on budget because we know there's no budget on here, but it's going to be a, a, um, a bid offer based on uh, your design ideas and things like that. <clears throat> so another thing that I usually do when we're in class um, is we'll do an actual hand sketch of this stuff. I print out this floor plan and then I give you some tracing paper. So when we come back with the tracing paper, you can like really kind of just sketch out different ideas of how you want this to look. Because if you've noticed when we're actually trying to do our schematic design phase, our ideas are develop, developing those ideas, doing that in the computer is not that great. Doing that in the Revit program is not awesome. So what I would do, uh, you don't even have to print this out. What I would do is I would get a, some regular paper and just kind of like sketch out some ideas of how you want this thing to look. Keep referring back to this uh, information from your client. Yeah, they didn't give you a lot to work with and that can be a little frustrating, but it also can be very liberating because you can really kind of run with it and kind of make things, you know, the way they, you know, you know the way you think it would be interesting. Um, so minimum requests, we're going to add two floors. Second floor is going to contain four offices, restrooms, a janitor's closet, and a mechanical room. Third floor will contain seven offices, restrooms, and a mechanical room. Mechanical room, if you end up taking my MEP class, which is based on Revit as well, which is mechanical electrical plumbing, we use the MEP with a mechanical room for um, our uh, air conditioning or large air conditioning units and other things like that. So if you do enjoy the, the Revit class, I do recommend taking MEP um, next semester 
And I think that uh, it'll be a good reinforcement of Revit. And plus you'll learn some new stuff. I just gotta make sure, we just gotta make sure that there's enough people that sign up for that class. So hopefully some of y'all sign up for that class too. Um, anyway, that being said, let's kind of go back to Revit and see what we can do to play with this. Before we move forward into the Revit stuff, any questions? Okay, cool. Uh, all right, so let's see what we got. We got uh, going to add a couple of floors on here. Um, I'm not going to talk about how to arrange the office spaces. I'm going to leave that to y'all. I'm going to jump back to this stuff and show you how we're going to begin the model and how we are going to use these tools to create, start creating our renovation. So first thing we want to do is save new file of original as a renovation model. So let me jump back to here. So before you start anything on your renovation model, we want to go to file, save as project, and wherever you're saving your project information, Let's rename this as final project. So I know this is my final project, my renovation version of the project, and this is the one that we're going to be doing 90% of our work in going forward, not the original file, but the renovation file. So always start with a new file. So let's save that as a renovation file. So now I have my original and my renovation. So let's talk about how I start creating multiple levels on here. So that we're gonna talk about elevations, the level tool, and then we're gonna add those different floors to the um, building today. So let's jump down here. So when we're adding additional floors, it's always best to work in an elevation uh, view. So let's jump to an elevation view. I like to use a south view. And as we've noticed on here already, there's already some elevation markers on here that tell us the heights and things that are going on. And these pretty much drive the different levels of how uh, our building is going to work. We've learned that how to, to attach that to um, you know, our floors to different levels and things like that. And it defaults to just two. Well, we need to add a few more levels in here to go ahead and get started. So in order to do that, I'm going to jump to the architecture tab all the way over to the datum panel and the level tool. So if I click on there, I can just start adding some additional levels. Now notice before I do that, how these location lines kind of show up on either end of here. Well, in order to make things a little bit easier for you, I definitely recommend that when that elevation line is connected with that location line, drag them. Excuse me. When you do that, they'll all work in unison. You can just, I mean, if I put one here, I can add one here as well, but the difference is now when I move these, they all move together. That one doesn't work with it. And there's times that you want to have that, and there's other times that you don't. Um, to make things easier for you in this particular case, let's go ahead and make sure that they all connect like this. So I've added that level three, and now I'm going to add another level. And they're all connected, so they all work together. Now we can play with these levels a little bit. Notice how it's set to level three, level four. Well, we can change this. I didn't really pay attention to where this was coming in. I just kind of like arbitrarily put it in. But we're going to have 10 foot between each floor. So I'm going to change this to 30, to, um, 30 feet, no, 20 feet, oops. 
and I'm going to change this one to 30 feet. Uh, Ms. Martin? Yep. Do you need those to be 10 feet? Or I, I've been doing 12 foot because I like 12. Do you want if, you're doing your, if you're doing yours at 12 feet, um, we didn't stipulate that before. Um, Does it matter? I mean, yeah, I can you easily. Know, for, your, for your first floor, let's leave your first floor height as is because that's okay. the height that you have for your first floor. For okay. your second floor, when I, you come back on Wednesday, um, Let's do, let's review that again um, in the ask the client phase of that. And the client may say, oh, 12 foot is good or it's 10 foot. So I'm kind of booting that answer to, to okay, that's fine. as like a part of the exercise. Cool. So, yeah, just leave it as is for now. <clears throat> okay. Um, Let's see. All right. So you want to add different levels and different the levels are going to drive a lot of stuff that we have what we attach things to in Revit. So we want to add two floors. So if we just there's an easy way to do it. I just call it raise the roof. It's very technical. Uh, so we go ahead and click on that roof, make it active. And remember that this roof is attached to it's constrained to level two. That's where it's coming in right here. Well, the easiest way for me to increase this building is to just to change this roof attached from level two to level four. And it was easy as that. So now I've added all the space for those additional floors. If I wanted to go up further, I could add more. Could I have changed this by, um, you know, adjusting it to 30 feet instead of attaching it to the roof. I could do that as well. The reason that the walls moved in conjunction with the roof is because when we did attach, um, attach top to base, we um, attached the walls to the roof. If these walls were not attached to the roof, then the roof would have moved separate from the walls. I'll show you an example of that in a bit. But if everything is connected properly, you're gonna end up with something that looks like this. Let's jump to 3D and see what it would look like there. So you can see the whole thing raised, which is pretty nice. So next thing we want to do is let's go in and hide this. Front wall so we can take a look inside, take a peek inside. So what we have inside, we have just the beginnings of our regular house. You see how we've got like the paint from the bottom floors on the exterior walls has gone up. Uh, well, we need to fix that too, because what happens, remember when we paint this wall, it attaches to the whole wall. That's when we come back with our split tool and we split the wall and we can paint these other walls different colors after that. So there's a lot of adjustments of colors that can be done. But I don't do that before you talk to your client and see what they want to do with that and see if they have any color schemes in mind. Because uh, like they said, they didn't come up with a lot of information to start with. But this gives you a great chance to talk to them and figure out what they want to do. The next thing you know that you need to do before you get a chance to talk to, to the client is we know we need to put in some floors here, um, some supporting second floors. So what we're going to do to add those second floors is we're all going to use the wood joist 10 inch wood floor and this is so we don't have to create our own floors it comes with some other parameters that are already in it and it's just um, this is just the floor like everybody to kind of start to work with so how are we going to put those in so let's jump back to Revit since it's going to be on our second floor we need to jump to our second floor level Oh, I did ceiling plan, oops. Um, there we go, much better. You know, it was ceiling plan because I couldn't see my walls. All right, the, these are the walls that are underneath. These are the first floor walls. So in order to create my floor for my second floor, I'm gonna go to my architecture tab, build panel, floor tool, always the default. And I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna find that wood joist, 10 inch wood finish. Everybody's gonna start with this one. 
So we'll just select that. And we're going to select the interior walls. And hit our green check mark. Uh, would you like this? Um, would you like the walls to go up to the floor's level to attach to the bottom? What's that asking is the floors that are the walls that are underneath this floor. Do we want to attach them? Let's not attach them for now because we're going to learn how to play with those later, which is fine. Um, the floor roofs, the floor roof overlaps the highlighted walls. Would you like to join the geometry and cut out? Yes, we can do that. Cancel there. Um, let's go to 3D, see what happened. So we've got something weird that looks like this. So a couple of things going on. Um, we've got, if I highlight this, I've got my wood joist floor at 10 inches, which is right here. But what's this on top of it? That is my ceiling. Um, so that ceiling uh, is currently at 10 feet. So what we're going to have to do with that is since this is a drop ceiling, we're going to have to adjust the size of that. I mean, the height of that. Um, so if we drop that down back to eight feet, let's see what happens there. When I brought that down to eight feet, look how it intersects my windows now. So you can see as you start making adjustments in any kind of renovation, it's going to affect other parts of the building as well. So there's other things that we need to do. If, um, you know, pretty much as, as architects and designers, we're problem solvers and we try and figure out how we're going to solve these problems and stuff like that. So when you come across things like this, try and figure out how to solve it, come up with some other options. Um, you know, when you would be talking to your client, say, look, we've got uh, this issue here, and then you can come back with a couple of different ideas to solve it. You know, if since you are creating a whole new second and third floor, this could be a good example of instead of setting at 10 foot floors, and we change those to 12 foot floors. Um, and then also there's, you know, the current um, ceiling tile we have here is uh, acoustical ceiling tile. Maybe this is more of like a high-end building and they want a uh, jipboard uh, ceiling as opposed to acoustical ceiling tile. Lots and lots of things to look, to, to look at. One of the other things I'm looking at when I, do, when I check into this ceiling is the fact that this ceiling is not per room. This ceiling actually runs the entire building. And in order to correctly put in our ceilings, we need to have these ceilings run from room to room because your ceiling technically right now is intersecting your wall, which you would not want. It would just be encapsulated in this one room. So it actually delete this ceiling and start over again. Um, there's a few things that need to be tweaked in here as far as um, room height, ceiling height, window height, uh, and kind of go from there. <clears throat> Another thing, if we kind of tilt this the other way, notice how these floors are intersecting our second floor. Well, we're gonna learn how to correct that as well. Don't worry about that for now. Uh, we'll talk about that in the next class. <laughs> but there's ways that we can adjust the height of these, of the floors, the ceilings, and the um, wall heights so they all line up correctly. We'll do that later on. So, all right, so we've got our second floor in. Let's go ahead and add our third floor. We would go back to our project browser level three. It does not show any walls underneath in this view because I have not added any floors. So that mean any walls, so you're okay there. If I started adding walls to level two, <laughs> I'm just gonna randomly put this here. I will delete that later. Now I jump back to level three. What is the height of that wall? Uh, excuse me, will you need to uh, add the wall before you, you add the third floor or you can just add it okay. without it? Yeah, we haven't got to that yet. 
we'll, we'll, we'll get to that, but that's a good question. We will, we will discuss that. I'm just kind of, I was hoping to show you an example of how that worked, but that did not work. Oh, that's probably because of the height of this wall. <laughs> Let me pick this wall. And it's connected up to level three. So if I unconstrain that and change that to like 11 foot, Hopefully my example will work. Ah, oh, it did, good, okay. So here I can see my floor below it. As we start progressing and moving through how to create these second floor wall designs, we'll talk about how that works a little bit better in different ways that we can turn on, on and off that view. But in this particular part right here, all I wanna do is add my third floor. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna make the architecture tab, floor tool, Make sure it's set to the wood joist 10 inch. Everyone is to use that. Let's go ahead and add that floor. All right, if you notice, I made a mistake and I have this on the outside uh, instead of the in interior wall line. And let's just go ahead and click that and just click through, which you know, people just kind of jump through this sometimes. But um, what did that actually do when I did that? Let's go to 3D. Oops. As you can see, it has it embedded in this wall a little bit. And depending on what settings that you have, sometimes you're gonna see this, see how this one is kind of supported in this wall. And this one is butted up against the wall. That's the difference between those two settings. And depending on which setting that you, you select, sometimes it'll go through the wall here. So you'll see your flooring outside your exterior wall. So I want you to just keep note of that. And as you play with these different floor options, see what happens. And just the more you play with them and manipulate them, the more you kind of figure out how to, to work with them. But notice that there is a difference between these. This one was cut into this wall. Now, is this gonna make a difference as far as this project's concerned? No, what's really gonna make a difference is when you're creating a full set of architectural plans, is this is where you're gonna come in with your detail plans, how these walls interconnect. Um, once you get into structural class, you'll see how these uh, structural drawings really show the detail of this. Um, this doesn't affect this one so much right now, but if we were actually going to supply a set of architectural drawings, like we referred back to that original set of drawings that we looked at at the beginning of the class, you'll see that there's a lot of detail that goes into how these walls connect to the floors and uh, that's all set in details. But this is just a little bit of play for your, your model right here. So this doesn't affect your plans. The information coming to create this information is all gonna be set in your details. So let me jump back to, all right. So the basic things I'd like you to do this week, I mean, by Wednesday, go into your elevations, create new elevations with your level tool. So it looks like that. You wanna bring your floor up to the third floor and you wanna have that kind of blank slate for your second and third floor and everybody use this. I want you to start sketching out preferably hand sketching some of these ideas for your um, second and third floor. Sorry about that, y'all. I keep trying to mute myself because my allergies are crazy. Um, so begin laying out the ideas of your second and third floor. Do a hand sketch. Um, you know, if you want me to take a look at it, what we usually do in class is we'll do like a, um, a red line exercise where I'll have you do this in class and we kind of outline some ideas and things like that. Uh, it's really difficult to do that, obviously, at long distance, but if you want to go ahead and sketch, do some hand sketches 
and um, take a picture of it and upload it to this uh, Revit mod. You can do that. I'll take a look at it. And then, um, but remember this, you don't know what exactly your client wants. You just have some ideas. So you can start sketching out ideas and things like that. So when you come back to your Revit model and you want to take a look at your second floor, you know, you can have some ideas sketched out if you want. Um, just so you can show that to the client and say, look, I've got this idea is how I want to run the walls like this. That way we can use this, this, um, this property this way. But really the main focus for this week is for you to think. Do this basic stuff in Revit to get the basics down. So as you think about how you want to um, create these parameters right here, you're going to have an idea and we're going to have a session next class where I'm going to open up the floor and you're just going to ask these questions and say like, Hi, when I was doing this, I noticed this. What do you think about that? And, and we'll go from there. So um, really kind of a thinking class uh, right now. Very basic stuff in order to create your Revit model. But we really want to move into a phase where um, we're really trying to design something new and different and really kind of impress the client and the client's going to come back with other information to add uh, to your project and you can go forward from there. Um, so that's really it for class today. Is there any questions, y'all? Yes. There's no questions, but Duff take some Zyrtec. <laughs> yes, thank you. Yeah, I definitely need to. Yeah. Ms. Martin, why you, why you have my drawing open? Can you do me a favor? Go into 3D. Yeah. And um, I guess uh, remove the um, hide the roof. Do you see my walls? You see that? How I took the contour of the roof. Yes, that's correct. So this is correct because. Um, what we what you did was you did attach top to base so this is actually correct if okay. these yeah so that's correct um, you just made it nope. difficult for me to split the walls but i figured it out you know how to split the walls to, to paint the walls different colors yeah yeah but when you attach top to base it's go that way if we did not do if you did not have that done when we raised that roof the walls would have stayed at 10 feet and then we would have had to you know do it change a couple of different things on how to like bring those walls up to the roof. But okay. I prefer attached top to base just because it works well in unison. There's ways that we can undo it. So let's just go back and um, reset all this stuff. Like if I went to this wall right here. And notice that we have attached top to base. I can do detach top to base. And if I do that, that wall is going to drop back to that 10 foot original 10 foot setting that it was at before. So if they were all not attached, they would all just stay at 10 feet. Then there's the other options I can take. Like if I wanted to come back here and do like, you know, a two tone building, I could do another wall and um, put another wall starting at my um, second floor and go up from there. Um, you know, but you would have to detach it in order to do that. Um, so there's all sorts of fun stuff we can do, but this is why it was attached and it looked weird at the top because now when I go back and I attach top to base, it's just going to attach itself and go back to the way it looked. Yeah, cool. I was just curious. Uh, I thought the walls were something wrong with them when, it, when I took the roof off. <clears throat> no, that's exactly how they should look. And that's also when I go back and like check stuff. Uh, if I see the walls that look like this, I know they're attached correctly. If they're if they're squared off, then I know that they weren't attached by using that um, attached top to base tool. <laughs> Any other questions, y'all? Um, I've I've got a quick question about the um, the ACT uh, system, the compound ceiling tile that shows mm -hmm. up when you put the floor in. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh, is there a way to just delete that altogether and then we can create ceilings later or do you just want to leave that there or, do you, or how do you want to how do you want to do that 
Um, we'll leave it here for now, but in order when you do your renovation, there's lots of stuff that you can do. Um, what, um, what I would do. Is there's a few things we can do since in it's an acoustical ceiling tile and it's a commercial building, we can't have drop ceilings. Right. And then our air conditioning units would run through here, which right. is typically what we do in our MEP class. Um, we're not going to do that in this one. We're going to learn how to make them flush. So what you could do is you could go back to your ceiling tool. Uh -huh. And remember, go to your type selector. Okay. You can start with a generic basic ceiling, jump into edit type, duplicate it, rename it, and create it. Is it, you know, you can even create wood ceilings right here if you wanted to. Oh, okay. Okay. Cause it's because when I still, when I drop that floor in, the ceiling shows up obviously on top of the floor. Yep. Um, so then when I go back and recreate all that, Will it then go to the correct place or do I move it to the correct place? Or? You move it to the correct place. And when we start manipulating some of this stuff, we'll do that. Like we've got our 10 foot, our 10 inch um, floor right here. Right. So if we pick that ceiling and we reset that, I believe it's to nine foot two. No, no, not nine foot backspace nine foot so here you can start to see that ceiling coming through plus if you take a look at the ceiling i believe the ceiling is actually four inches thick right um, and we'll sure. adjust that as well but you can see by just adjusting the height of where that ceiling's located we start getting all of our building information lined up together to okay where it's supposed to be where your where your uh, jip board would be flush with that bottom of that floor okay Okay, cool. But we're going to get into that too. Yeah. I'm just curious because I'm looking at it and I just don't know what to do with it. And I just want to get rid of it. But I'll, yeah, I'll you just... can just delete it and start over with that later on too, you know, because okay. okay. it's going it's to be changed. But okay. yeah, just use this time period to do those very basics in your Revit model. And then we're going to come back with questions on Tuesday um, to ask and see if that'll help you in your design development. Um, your schematic design a little bit better. Okay, thank you. All right, cool. All right, y'all. Um, that's it. And I uh, will see y'all on Wednesday. Bye, y'all. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.